In this video, I'm going to explain to you one of the four primary option Greeks, and in this video, we are focusing on Vega. And the option Greek Vega estimates how much your option is expected to change in value in relation to a 1% move in implied volatility. As the demand for a stock's options change, the option prices themselves will actually change in value. And with these changes in value over time, the implied volatility or the expected amount of stock price fluctuation from the market will actually change over time and we can determine that based on changes in the stock's option prices. But Vega as an option Greek is a little bit tricky for me to explain because implied volatility does not change on its own. It is not something that magically just changes. Implied volatility as it measures option prices actually changes when the option prices change. So for implied volatility to change, the stock's option prices have to change first and for that to happen, buying and selling pressure in the market has to shift so that the option prices become more expensive or become cheaper. Based on how much time those options have until expiration, a change in their prices will alter the level of implied volatility that is currently observed in that stock. I know this is complicated, but stick with me because I'm gonna do my best to explain it intuitively to you in just a few minutes. Getting back to an example of what implied volatility actually measures, if we have two $100 stocks and we look at their 30-day option prices, the options with more extrinsic value will give that stock a higher implied volatility reading because on two $100 stocks with 30 days until expiration, the options that are more expensive are going to tell you which stock has more expected volatility in the future because option prices are an indication of how much volatility is expected from that stock going into the future. So theoretically speaking, if the stock with cheaper options were to experience a shift in supply and demand, and those option prices actually increased to match the more expensive stocks options, then the implied volatility of that stock with initially cheaper options would see an increase in implied volatility if those option prices increased to match the stock that initially had more expensive options. In other words, if you look at a stock's options and in one single trading day, those options get more expensive and take on more extrinsic value due to more demand for purchasing those options, then you will see an increase in implied volatility in that stock because with more expensive options relative to the time until they expire, that means that traders are expecting more and more stock price volatility. And because of that, the option prices will increase in value based on that increased demand. And with it, implied volatility will also increase. Vega, one of the primary option Greeks, estimates how much an option's value is expected to change with a 1% change in implied volatility. Let's look at a table so I can demonstrate exactly what I mean by this. If we look at the $10 option with 0.25 Vega, the option is expected to be worth $10.25 if implied volatility increases by 1%. That same $10 option with 0.25 Vega is expected to be worth about $9.25 if implied volatility were to fall by 3%. But as I mentioned earlier, implied volatility does not magically change. Implied volatility changes when a stock's option prices experience a broad change due to a shift in supply and demand, which means that the market believes the stock will be more or less volatile in the future than it currently is now based on those option prices. Now, the reason this makes explaining Vega tricky is because Vega is typically described as if implied volatility increases by 1%, then the option price will increase by its amount of vega. And if implied volatility falls by 1%, then the option price will decrease by the amount of its vega. But as I just explained, implied volatility does not just magically change and option prices have to change first before implied volatility changes. So I like to actually explain vega in the opposite manner. And the way I like to explain vega is if an option price changes by the amount of its vega, then implied volatility will shift by about 1%. So to say that one more time, if an option price changes by the amount of its vega without any change in the stock price and without any passage of time, then we should expect implied volatility to change by about 1%. For instance, if we have a $10 option with a vega of 0.25 and the stock price does not change and within a five minute period, the option price goes from $10 to $10.25, then I would expect implied volatility to have increased by about 1%. In a more extreme example, let's say we have option A and option B. 
option A is worth 75 cents and option B is worth 25 cents and implied volatility is 1%. If implied volatility goes to 0%, that means the options have no extrinsic value whatsoever. So if that option A went from 75 cents to $0, that means implied volatility would go from 1% to 0%, and option B would go from 25 cents to $0 because it has to lose all of its extrinsic value for implied volatility to go to zero. And because of that, we would say option A has a vega of 0.75 and option B has a vega of 0.25. So which options have the most exposure to vega or changes in implied volatility? Generally speaking, the options with the most extrinsic value, such as the at the money options or options with more time until expiration, will have higher levels of vega. In this chart, we can see the options with the highest vega exposure are the at the money options with less and less vega exposure as we move to strike prices further away from the stock price. Going one step further, the options with even more extrinsic value will be the at the money options at further expiration dates. In this chart, we're looking at options across strike prices, but also across various expiration dates. As we can see, the options with 225 days until expiration have more vega exposure than the options at the same strike prices, but with 15 days to expiration. To intuitively explain why this is, we need to understand that volatility scales with time. Implied volatility is always presented as an annualized number, but we can use the annualized implied volatility number to calculate implied stock price ranges over specific time periods. For instance, a $100 stock with 20% implied volatility has a 30-day expected range of plus or minus $5.73, meaning the stock price has an implied 68% probability of being within $5.73 of $100 in 30 days time. The same stock has a 90-day expected range of plus or minus $9.93 meaning the stock price has an implied 68% probability of being within $9.93 of $100 in 90 days. If the stock's option price is increased so that implied volatility was 21%, the 30-day expected range would increase to $6.02, which is an increase of $0.29 cents in the expected range. The 90-day expected range, however, would increase to $10.43, which is an increase of 50 cents over the initial expected range with implied volatility at 20%. From this simple calculation, we can see that the increase in implied volatility impacts the longer term expected range more so than the shorter term expected range because stock prices have larger expected ranges over longer periods of time as compared to shorter periods of time, an increase in implied volatility will impact the longer term expected range more so than it will the shorter term expected range, which is why longer term options have larger vega values than shorter term options at the same exact strike prices. But just because longer term options have larger vega values than shorter term options, it does not necessarily mean you are going to make or lose more money from a change in implied volatility if you are trading longer term options. And the reason for that is that when implied volatility does change, whether it's from a stock price increase or a stock price decrease, the shorter term expiration cycles typically experience much larger changes in implied volatility as compared to the longer term expiration cycles. For example, if a stock's price falls significantly and the one month expiration cycle experiences a 5% increase in implied volatility, the 365 day expiration cycle might only experience a 1% increase in implied volatility which is significantly less than the 5% increase that the one month options saw. In the financial crisis of 2008, I plotted the VIX index, which is calculated from one month SPX option prices against the VIX futures contracts expiring in October, November, and December. As we can see, when implied volatility as measured by the VIX index increased, the October VIX future increased less and the December VIX future increased by the lowest margin and it is interesting because the December VIX future had the longest time until expiration. If you would have purchased the VIX call options at the strike price of 20 in each of these expiration cycles, here is how each trade would have performed. As we can see, the shortest term call option did the best, while the longest term call option increased by the lowest margin. To give another example from real price history, 
Let's look at a significant stock price decrease in IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF, in September of 2019. On September 23rd, 2019, IWM was trading for $155, and the October 2019 options, with 25 days to expiration, were trading with 18.5% implied volatility. The September 2020 options, with 361 days to expiration, were trading with 21.4% implied volatility. The next day, September 24, 2019, IWM had fallen to $152.50, and the October 2019 options with 24 days to expiration were now trading with 21.3% implied volatility. The September 2020 options with 360 days to expiration were trading with 21.8% implied volatility. The October 2019 options with about 25 days to expiration experienced a near 2% increase in implied volatility, while the September 2020 options with about 360 days to expiration experienced a 0.4% increase in implied volatility, demonstrating that the longer-term implied volatilities are more stable than shorter-term implied volatilities, and this means that longer-term options with more Vega exposure do not necessarily have more volatility risk than shorter-term options with less Vega exposure. Because, generally speaking, longer-term implied volatilities do not change as much as shorter-term implied volatilities when the market does move. In this entire video, I've talked about specific option Vega values, but what's more important to understand is your position Vega, and position Vega is actually the expected profit or loss that should occur or is estimated to occur from a change in implied volatility as it relates to your option position. In this image of the Tastyworks trading platform, we can see that the position Greeks for the SPX position I have on. In the right hand column in the positions tab, it says my positions Vega is negative 18.46. This means that if a 1% change in implied volatility occurred in the expiration cycle that I'm trading, my position is estimated to experience a PL change of $18.46. More specifically, if the implied volatility increased by 1%, I am expected to lose $18.46. And if the implied volatility decreased by 1%, I am estimated to make $18.46. While the position Vega tells you how much you are exposed to changes in implied volatility, keep in mind that it is very difficult to predict just how much implied volatility will change in your specific expiration cycle when the stock price moves. Generally speaking, if you are in a longer term expiration cycle, the implied volatility of those options will be relatively stable compared to much shorter term expiration cycles. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.